Hi, I'm Terry Wilson and I'm self-retired. What does that mean? Well, my inner self retired me from corporate. Um, it shifted me in a way that I've never ever known before and I've listened to my inner self quite a bit my entire lifetime. That's part of being a recluse is um, we withdraw from the outside world and go inward because the outside world sometimes for some of us is like touching hot coals. Every time that we reach out, we get burned. And sometimes we put our hand really close just to feel the heat. And if we leave it there too long, then of course we get burned. So it makes us not want to reach out because our inner self doesn't hurt us like that. And that's, that's what makes a lot of us withdraw. That's probably um, a lot of you know, what, what created my anxiety, um, even going back. And the other day you know, I was trying to figure out what is my thing? What is my cog in the wheel that, that I can share that will help people because I'm, I'm a giver. I like to help people. <laughs> It's just, it's just what givers do. We, we like to help people. We see an opportunity and we take it. And after doing the video the other day um, about anxiety, when I was dealing with anxiety attacks, um, was it yesterday morning? Yesterday morning or the day before? I, I woke up during like the 4 a.m. hour and I was advised that anxiety is my thing to, to talk about. And I'm okay with that. Uh, here, here's why. Throughout the last few years of taking in a lot of the trainings and um, different individuals, you know, that are, are, are speaking about their cog in the wheel, I noticed a lot of things that did not resonate with me, not because it wasn't my thing. Um, I paid attention because part of it was my thing, but I noticed how it is that it made them feel. And you know, when, when something makes us feel bad and we continue to, to push forward that it cre we're creating an anxiety. You know, it's like we're putting our hand near that hot coal just to see how close we can get our hand before we get burned. So I didn't, I, I didn't want to partake in anything like that because in this industry, you talk about your your cog in the wheel over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? Because you're constantly reaching new people, you're constantly, um, you know, you're constantly dealing with the same thing over and over again. And I don't, I've had so much <laughs> in my past um, that I really, you know, I looked at everything and I'm like, I don't want to talk about any of this stuff over and over and over and over and over again. Like that, it, it's just not fun. Like it, it created anxiety in me, and I kept turning to to some somebody else to teach me something else. Okay, what did you do? And then, okay, what did you do? And how did you do this? And what are you doing now? And, and you know, I, I learned a lot. Um, I've learned a lot from, from Tony, from Dean, from Evan, from Lewis, from all kinds of people, Dr. Joe, um, just all kinds of people. Um, Greg Braden is a, another favorite and uh, just uh, there's all kinds of people but I couldn't find what exactly was my thing there was a lot of things that made sense a lot of a lot of the pieces of the puzzle fit together for me so that was great and what I have noticed is that when I am around those types of individuals my energy is much higher <laughs> than when I'm thinking about the things that bring me anxiety, um, you know, like accepting that life has retired you is not easy when you have, oh, here it goes again. 
it's not an easy thing when anxiety makes me cry. Um, when you've spent your entire adult lifetime creating your career and being proud of everything it is that you've done and all the people that you've helped and all the different businesses that you've helped in one way or another. And then for life to say, okay, you've done that enough. Well, I'm a giver. How can I, how can my giving be done? It didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense to me. So, I, and, and being a recluse and not, you know, wanting to deal with people. Um, I did have a Facebook at the time. I don't, I don't go on there anymore. They blocked me a long time ago and, you know, apparently they've given me access back, but whatever. I'm not, I'm not going back there. So that's not happening. And I realize that it, it, it cuts me off from opportunities, but, you know, I, I don't belong, believe in injustices and what they did was wrong. There was, anyway, I won't go into that. So if my body is telling me that, you know, every time it is that I talk about this subject or that subject or that subject, or like my friend, you know, that makes me cry too. And that was a really hard one to let go of also. But we start to see things differently. And you know, we, we get these reminders from people that speak to our soul. <laughs> I love all of you. <laughs> um, those are good tears. But we start to pay attention and we think, okay, so, I do trust this person, and what if what they're saying is true? Then I have to have a different perspective of, for instance, my career or my friend. Tony says, life works for us, not to us. And in that respect, it brings gratitude. Because, you know, we don't know what we're doing in this life. We, uh, you know, we, we go about how it is that we've been programmed to do. And, and we just, you know, that's, that's our path. And that's how, you know, we do that path as best as we can. Um, you know, we've beaten down that path and, and paved the way for other people. And now it's time to step on a new path. And that's okay. Um, but what? What then, right? Because one thing that people don't talk about in retirement, um, it, when you're working, nobody talks about retirement. <laughs> Other than, do you want to have a 401k? <laughs> well, I did, you know, until, you know, my firing turned into medical because of my anxiety and PTSD. And then I've been dealing with trying to get approved for disability and that's been going on for quite a while and you know all the different agencies want to see different things and they have their own guidelines and that's just been <sighs> but even though I didn't receive anything during the pandemic the you know I might have gotten one stimulus on a tax return um, but even then, on the tax returns, the state said, well, you don't qualify for this home heating credit because your income was less than your expenses. Well, you saw that I took out my 401k. That's what I was using to pay my heat. <laughs> like, I didn't have any income. Yes, my, that's why I need the heating credit is because my income was less than my expenses. You know, and it's just... All these different things, it's just like your mind just gets blown over and over and over again. And you're like, you're trying to focus on <sighs> life happens to us. Now, life happens for us, not to us. 
and you know eventually you just have to just let it go and say okay what can I do now and um, honestly the last three years I've been surviving on grace and gratitude um, grace and gratitude of you know they're my inner self and so I, I learned about energetics also um, it started with an introduction to Bob Proctor literally about two months before he passed away um, and then one of his top students you know kind of picked up in his place because he was in a similar circle as me because life had placed me there so that I could be introduced to this individual um, and he teaches about energetics um, and in, into manifesting but the really the energetics part is uh is, is fascinating to me. I love energy. It's it's cool. And then that, of course, also ended up getting me introduced to all different kinds of people, including Bashar. And if you haven't heard of Bashar, you really need to look him up because he is somebody who is a and is an amazing channeler. Um, and I, I didn't believe in channeling at one point in time, even though I've always listened to myself and I've had amazing experiences myself, um, I didn't understand it. And, you know, possibly what I'm doing now is, is channeling, but I think I'm just recalling from my past experiences. Um, but Bashar, Bashar said uh, something to, well, he says amazing things all the time. But the other day, because I was guided to discuss anxiety and I had decided yesterday and I had told somebody because that's part of, you know, making things happen is you have to, you have to tell yourself and you have to tell somebody else. And that's how it is that we hold ourselves accountable. And another way to create content sometimes is to... Um, look at the first thing that jumps out at you not necessarily the first message or the first video or the first whatever but you know when you're scrolling and something jumps out at you that is life guiding you that is God universe consciousness whatever guiding you to say hey this resonates with me this is what it is that I'm supposed to talk about today so if you're looking for a piece of content you can do this every single day because every single day and, and, you know, you can, you can get hooked on, you know, everything resonating with you. So it's important to stop at the first thing. So that's what I did today. And Bashar was actually referencing something and it ended up leading to him mentioning energy and anxiety. Choosing to do things out of excitement versus anxiety was one of the main things that he had mentioned and he says that's what makes the difference vibrationally and that's where energetics comes in so dr joe a long time ago dr joe dispenza i'm sure everybody knows who he is um i learned from watching some of his videos on gaia how to rewire myself and the, the nuts and bolts of that was we can change our emotions in an instant. You know, we see parents, you know, making faces with their babies and getting the babies to, um, to respond back with a similar face, right? You know, so if the parent puts on a sad face, the baby starts crying. If the parent puts on a happy face, the baby starts, you know, laughing. And, you know, or, you know if they do something silly... And what that is, is the parent is sending energy to the baby and the baby is responding in kind. The baby is responding back with the same type of energy. And that's part of the energy connection that we all have with each other. And when we realize that what we put out is what it is that we draw in, then we realize, okay, how can I change what it is that I keep getting back and, and I know that starts with changing me, but how do I change me in order to create a different world that is around me so that I'm not touching hot coals? I want the coals to be out, <laughs> right? 
we, we don't we don't like anxiety anxiety is not fun it's just it's not fun i mean it really brings us down into a lower state of vibration um yesterday i had come across a video where a guy had, had posted quite a touching um little clip about anxiety and depression and how we can go for days without taking a shower and we wear the same clothes and we don't care if we stink and we don't brush our teeth and things like that. I've definitely been through that. I, I absolutely have. Um, I still don't like to do my hair because I figure I don't really have anybody to do my hair for and I don't, you know, that's part of the old me. Um, part of the new me is I pull my hair back and, you know, then my guru friend had advised me of why it is that I should pull my hair back, which, you know, again, is an energy thing. So I'm like, good, because I prefer pulling my hair back. <laughs> now I have an excuse to. <laughs> so if you're if you're a woman with long hair and you just feel like you want to pull it back, you know what, I, I can go into that in another video. If you, you know, mention something below and, and I'll tell you what it is that my guru friend said. Um, but the thing about the anxiety and the energy that we put off and bringing it back to us, choosing to do things out of excitement versus anxiety. So when we are in an anxiety state, um, when we're experiencing a little bit of anxiety or whether we're getting like a full blown on anxiety attack where our mind just explodes and we can't get our words out right and we can't, you know, we, we don't need people to talk. We need them to listen. And you, like, just stop. Um, when we think about the things that we do when we are in an anxious type state, uh, for instance, even the other day when I had suggested listening to music or going for a walk, these are things that help bring us out of a state of anxiety. And the vibration of the music or the podcasts that we have in our ears that we're intaking will change the, the energy within us. So it's always important to input, especially for people with anxiety, to input positive input um, because those are our people. That, those are the people that we resonate with. And you know, we seem to be living in a, in a world of other people that I just, we don't understand. We don't understand the outside world. We don't understand why does they do the things that we do and we don't have any control over and there's nothing that we can do. So, you know, we, we feel very helpless and that, I think that is part of the thing that causes the anxiety in us is, you know, we are all givers and we, we want to help and trying to figure out how when we feel helpless is, you know, it's just like, it's, it's a circle. <laughs> um, so if we think about doing things out of excitement instead, another thing I heard the other day, um, I don't know if this was Dolores Cannon, which also definitely is somebody that you should look up. Um, she passed away several years ago, but her, her work is, out there and um she's just she resonates so much just like Bashar you know just resonates with with our soul and there's uh there's information out there for everybody um but I think it was her it could have been somebody else but you know we all repeat these things because we reach different people when it comes to manifestation um, let's say for instance that you need money. Okay. And especially this goes along with having anxiety and my, my situation is a perfect example, which I won't go into right now, but if we focus on the fact that we, you know, are out of money and we're running out of time and things are all going to be shut off and you don't, you know, I mean, you can just feel how that just brings you down. What they said is know that money is on its way. It's like it, it, it's like um, somebody cutting you a check for twenty five thousand dollars, and the bank saying, "Okay, we just have to hold it for ten days 
to make sure that it clears and then you'll be good. And everybody is familiar with how banks need to make sure that the funding is accurate because, you know, you know, it's their business. That's what they do. <laughs> um, so if you imagine that, you feel that relief, you know, you, you got that, you got that check, you got, you got that piece of paper and you're like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And right now, even right now, just allow yourself to feel that relief that, wow, because what we're doing is we're shifting our vibration and, and it takes a minute. We're shifting our vibration from being panicked to neutral, that sense of relief. And then knowing that in just a couple days, that money's going to clear. It could be sooner. You know how the banks work. It could be sooner. You'll actually have access to those funds. So then you need to figure out what is it that you're going to do with those funds. Now, energetically, it's, it's not everybody has their own thing um, because we each have our own dreams and I am not going to tell you that whatever it is that your dream is is um, is wrong because it may be different than mine um, everybody has their own dreams so whatever it is in money is a transfer of energy right so again money is energy and what it is that we do with this should should be for good if we want to because we're receiving good we want to make sure that we give that money that energy out in good buying snacks for instance you know or or any lower vibration thing is probably not um you know th those are probably not the things that you'll want to consider so I, being a giver, I like to, to give. And because I'm a recluse, I don't really have anybody around me other than, you know, my kids and my kids are fine. And it's not about, you know, me giving them money. It's about what good can I do in the world with this money? And so I was thinking about that the other day. And we have to think about how, how and if we don't know, then... Put the thought in our head, say it out loud to ourselves. create that, that energy out into the universe so that we can receive an answer. If we don't ask, we can't get an answer. And what happened when I did that was, and this, for me, I don't, I don't know, it usually happens within like a day or two. Um, I usually get an answer back. Early mornings, 4 a.m. hour is a really, really good time to be listening to what it is that's being said to you because it's usually your answer for the day. That's usually the thing that you need to work on that day um, because it's important to take immediate action. And, you know, those of us with anxiety, sometimes we need we need time to regroup and it, it just it takes us a little bit longer, but we get there. <laughs> we get there. Um, so what happened is I had come across or, or something was presented to me. And a lot of the times the things that are presented to me are in the, the advertisements and not the content on social media. That's actually how it is that I initially found who I, I later discovered to be Dean and Tony. And I had no idea who these people were. <laughs> Especially with as big as Tony is, literally. Um, I had no idea who these people were. And Dean with his heart of gold. It, why? Because I had my nose to the grindstone behind a computer working for somebody else instead of doing anything for myself. And, but that's okay. I'm, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I've taken it a lot the last couple of years. So when we pay attention to sometimes the opposite um, and, you know, content versus the advertisements, you know, that's a really good example. Um, you know, sometimes we get tired of the ads. Well, what's the source that you're, you know, that you're watching, that you're taking in where you're getting ads that, that you don't like? 
that's probably telling you that maybe you should shift your interest from this particular source to a different source. For instance, maybe from TV to YouTube. Find things that actually resonate with you. And that's the beauty of YouTube, right? So when we take in the, the, the things, oh, I digress. I got off track. So the answer that came back to me was in the form of an advertisement. And the individual drew my attention because he was speaking the language that I, I am familiar with within myself and familiar with hearing in those that I have surrounded myself with. And that goes with any type of interest, you know, for instance, if you're into cars and somebody starts talking about, you know, car lingo, gears and, and whatnot, you're going to be drawn to, to that because that's something that resonates with you. It's something that interests you. And so I was listening to this individual and the more I was listening, I'm like, is he... Is he part of this circle too? Because it's a big circle. But, you know, I I, I delve into each individual <laughs> quite extensively to really get a good feel of who it is that they are and what it is that they do and what their thing is. You know, what is it that they're putting out into the world and how is it that they're doing it? And what I have discovered is that everybody in the, you know, this, the circle is um, all like-minded. And they do happen to know each other or they end up getting introduced to each other because, again, they're on the same vibrational frequency. So he drew me in. Um, I signed up for a Zoom. I paid attention to the Zoom. Yes, they sell things. Um, everybody who has gotten past a certain point, they turn back around and they sell what it is that they have learned. And it doesn't matter if you're starting out or, or if you're, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. That's just the way that it works. Because when people pay, they pay attention. If you're given a car as a kid versus if you save up and pay for the car yourself, there's a different level of attention that goes into it. When somebody gives you a car, you're just like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. But when you actually pay for the car yourself, you take better care of it, right? You take better care of it. You do the maintenance on it better. You don't just think, oh, somebody will give me another car. I don't care. I can just go ahead and do whatever. That That's how, that's how it is that we pay attention to things. When we put our own effort into something, when we put our good effort out, we get good stuff back. And... Again, money is nothing but energy, and I won't go into all that, but it is. It's uh, Somebody else had said, money is like water. It's like a river. It, it flows in and it flows out, and it's constantly flowing. And there's no need to, to stop the, and dam it up because, you know, you feel like there isn't going to be more. The water is always flowing. Now, if you create the dam in order to produce energy that you can give to others, then that is a good reason to produce a dam. If you're just creating the dam to hoard the water, um, you're not really doing anything with it, right? And, and that's, that's not a good use of that energy. And eventually that energy will, you know, karma anyway. So finding what it is that you can do, you know, knowing, knowing that, you know, this money is energy and it's constantly flowing and it's constantly changing and, and it's going in one way and, and out the other. That's why people charge for things. So always go into these um, courses, these classes, and, you know, they're given for free so that you can learn what it is that they do. If it resonates with you and your body inside says, yes, that is what I want. That's what I want right there. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.